grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God of restoration, you have the power to heal and to renew. Mend all that is broken in us and in our world, and bring us to wholeness for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Let me invite the children that are here today to come on down. Our children's message this morning. Hi guys. Look us on the corner. So I got something for each of you this morning. Band-aid. Have you ever needed to have a band-aid before? When do you when do you use these? When you get hurt, you get a little owl, you get cut or something, scratch. Well, you've got a scratch right now, you could actually use that band-aid. So, um, <coughs> what do band aids do? They heal you. Do you think that they, would you heal if you didn't put a band aid on? Yeah, because they Well, that's very, very true. You are so smart. Oh my gosh. When you're bleeding, you need a band aid. What, what, so, what does the band aid actually do then? Because your body is going to heal. God made us with these wonderful, incredible bodies that heal when you get a cut around, right? So the band aid sucks up the blood so they don't come out of your body. Yeah, it kind of absorbs the blood. And it puts pressure on it. Now, are there other things, if you don't have a band aid on there that could get in that cut, that could make it worse? in the air and all around if you touch something. Germs, that's right. And does the band-aid, what does the band-aid do to help you with the germ problem? Doesn't let dirt. Doesn't let any dirt. It keeps it clean and protects you, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So open up that pack of band-aids. You can see it's already open a little bit. What is it? Oh my gosh, they say something on there, don't they? What do they say? It says, Jesus saves. Now, Jesus isn't going to say, don't put band-aids on, is he? Jesus says, if you're sick, you should go to the doctor, right? But who saves us? Jesus, God does. And, and who is Jesus? Jesus is God, right? Jesus and God are one, right? So, um, so Jesus is more than just a band-aid for us, right? A band-aid helps us and protects us. But Jesus saves us. And that is much more important than just healing, isn't it? Because our body will heal itself eventually. Well, I'm glad that Jesus um, saves us in more ways than just healing uh, cuts and, and stuff. Because Jesus, what else did he do for us? He, he did make the world a much better place. Because he was able to live a life completely without sin. So there was nothing in him that was bad at all. And yet, our world did the worst thing that we could possibly do to somebody. We killed them on the cross. But that wasn't the end, was it? Death with Jesus didn't get the last word. Because on Easter, what happened? He came back to life. Jesus rose and he was alive. Even today, Jesus makes his home inside of us, each of us. And that protects us. And that gives us eternal life which is much better than just this life, because all, of, all the people in this life eventually are going to get old and decrepit, asking, I'm old and decrepit. And pretty soon, we won't be here anymore. None of us get out of this life. We all die. She's 
still behind you and you still remember her and she's alive in our hearts and our minds, right? Our memories. And because, and because of what Jesus did for us, we know that someday when we die, we're going to get to see them again. Right? And we're all going to be together. That's great. You got, you got this down, girl. All right. Well, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you save us from the worst uh, that life and the devil can throw at us. Uh, we also thank you that you created us with bodies that are marvelous, amazing, and that they mostly can heal, especially for minor cuts and, and injuries. Um, but that you came to save us in the big way, from the big things. And so we give you all of our love and our thanks and our praise. And here's the answer to your wonderful name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, thank you. I think Ms. Marge has a nice um, Sunday school lesson plan for you. And I hope you don't need to use that band-aid, but if you do, you got one. Jesus 
answered them, My father is still working, and I am also working. For this reason, Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Healer of the world, Jesus Christ our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Have you ever experienced a healing miracle in your life? Don't, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to stand up and testify, but if you have, or do you know I'm something? Yeah, several. I've experienced both large and small miracles. And because of those signs, I've learned to trust in God and to trust in my Savior Jesus, no matter how tough times get. From many years ago, the healing of Melanie's heart when she was struggling to survive as a baby, to making the wrong turn that actually turned out to be placing me into the exact spot where Jesus wanted me to be, I've learned to see healing and supernatural things as normal as the sunrise every day. In today's gospel reading from John, we have two stories of miraculous healings. I noticed a couple of things that stand out in these miracle stories. First, Jesus heals this royal official's son from far away. But first, before he does that, he comments, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. At first glance, we think, well, I thought that Jesus was rebuking this uh, official just for asking for a healing for his son. The more I thought about it, Jesus isn't so much rebuking this man as he is making a general observation about the human race. First of all, the you that he says in that sentence is the plural you all, you know, in Greek. In, in English, we can't tell the difference between you and you, unless we say you all, like the Texas drawl or something. But in Greek, it's very specific. It's, it's either you singular or you plural, and it's two different words. In this case, it's you all. And so the truth is we're no better today than that official was back then. We're constantly asking for Jesus to do some sign or wonder or another. Our prayer requests, mine included, on any given day are mostly requests for healing of some kind or to receive some kind of a supernatural blessing from God. If we're not asking for ourselves, we're asking for a loved one. And if we're not asking for a loved one, well, we're asking for healing for our planet or, or for the nations that are about ready to go to war. Don't have misunderstand me. We're told in the Bible to ask for these things, but the problem is that we tend to make the blessings of God the basis for our faith. Now, John, the author of this gospel uh, book, wants us to know that true life comes through faith in Jesus, and our faith in Jesus is a gift that comes straight from the heart of God. So in this comment, Jesus is really more lamenting that it takes signs and wonders to convince people who he is. And even then, most people miss the sign and therefore miss out on the blessing and the love that God wants to share. The second thing I noticed uh, when Jesus tells this official his son will live, he uses a strange word. The Greek language has two different words for live or life. Uh, one is the word bios, and we're probably all familiar with that. Everything that's alive has bios. Uh, we get the science of biology from that Greek word. When Jesus heals the official's son, he tells the man, go, your son will live in English. But the word that Jesus uses is a word that doesn't necessarily mean biologically alive, as in breathing and with a heartbeat. 
Jesus uses the other Greek word for life, zoa. And that's a different kind of living, zoa. This is what Jesus was talking about at the well in the story of the woman at the well from last week. It's a life that is whole and full. It's a life that gushes up to eternal life. This is the life Jesus came to offer to all people. And it's the kind of life I want. Jesus tells us, or John rather, tells us in his gospel outright that the healing of the royal official son was the second of the signs that Jesus did. The first was changing water into wine at that wedding in Cana. And now, after going to Jerusalem and back to Cana again, Jesus does this second supernatural act in the healing of this royal official son. In John's gospel, the miracles are all signs. And signs are things that point to something else. They don't point to themselves. Jesus wasn't doing that to say, look how great I am. That's what signs do. They point to other things. In John's Gospel, there's seven named signs. The results of the signs that are given to us is that some people come to believe in, to trust in, and to have faith in Jesus. John wants all people to know three things about Jesus. He wants us to know Jesus, first and foremost, is a human being. He's a normal man who hurts, who bleeds, who even cries. John also wants us to know that Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah. Israel had been waiting for the Messiah for over 500 years, longer if you want to go all the way back to King David, when God promised David an heir would sit on his throne forever. And then the third thing John wants us to understand about Jesus is that he and the Father are one. Not co-equal, but one. Signs and wonders can only get you part way there. We can see Jesus as a real human being by reading the gospel. We read that he had to eat, that he got thirsty. And I'm certain that if he cut himself, he bled. He certainly died. A horrific death. In the Gospel of John, we also see signs and wonders help people come to know Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah. Do we still need signs to trust in Jesus today? Or is just reading about them in the Bible enough? Well, I, for one, think that I'm a lot more like Thomas than I'd like to admit. If you remember, Thomas is the one who refused uh, to believe that Jesus uh, had been resurrected until he saw for himself and was able to put his hand into the nail holes and into the spear uh, wound in his side. I said these signs can only get you so far. And what I meant by that is that third thing that we need to know about Jesus, that he is God. John tells us, though, so, right from the beginning of his book, when he says the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Later on in the Gospel, I think in the 10th chapter, uh, Jesus will say, I and the Father are one. I mean, how much more plain can we get? It's not like three co-branches of the government, co-equal branches, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. So the miracles or signs can get us to know him as the Messiah, but very few people in John's Gospel come to know Jesus as God Almighty in flesh. Thomas does. After seeing Jesus in the upper room and gazing on those nail wounds and the spear wound in his side, he proclaims, My Lord and Also, after the resurrection, two of Jesus' disciples, who are walking from Jerusalem on the road to Emmaus, they come across Jesus. But they don't get to know Jesus as, they, as Jesus recounts the scriptures to them and explains all of the scriptures and opens them to them. 
They only recognize Jesus as their God in the breaking of the bread. If we only rely on signs and wonders, we miss out on a large part of who Jesus is. Thankfully, we have the rest of the story because we are the Easter people that live after the resurrection. And so we get to see the resurrected Jesus in all of his glory and to know him and to love him as a human Jesus who died for us. He's the one who took the worst that sin, the world, and the devil himself could muster. He swallowed up all of our sin and in doing so defeated our biggest adversary, death itself. We have these and other miracle stories of how Jesus healed people or performed other signs and wonders in the Bible. And still today, we've all heard about someone, if it hasn't happened in our own families or to us, who had terminal cancer one day and the next day it was gone. I mean, in this very congregation, uh, a couple of years ago, we prayed over a quilt for my own daughter, Melanie. And the very next day, when she went to have her kidney stones uh, removed, they were not there. We hear about these miracles, but they're still pretty rare. They don't happen. Big ones don't happen every day. Every person who has received one of our prayer quilts, for example, wasn't miraculously healed, at least not physically. The plain truth is our biological bodies are perishable. They grow old and they decay. But I thank God that every day that Jesus didn't come to heal me or you biologically. The true miracle is the gift of faith, the Zoa life that Jesus came to offer to all people. So one final observation about these stories, the religious leaders, the, as John calls them, the Jews, they totally missed the point of the miraculous healing of this man at the pool. All they could see was that Jesus did work on the Sabbath. Oh my God, he broke one of the laws. They lacked compassion to think, well, maybe they should rejoice because this man was healed after 38 years of being lame. Maybe they should have come to his aid. Maybe they should have been the ones to take him down to the pool 38 years ago. Instead, their hearts were hardened and they began to plot the death of the one person who embodied the very love of God Almighty. But before we get too high and mighty and look down on those religious leaders, isn't that pretty much the same way we Christians behave? We're so preoccupied with the many things in our lives that we might not even notice the miraculous things that are happening every single day all around us. We look for the huge things like God healing our loved ones, but we fail to see the beauty of everyday sunrises and sunsets. PJ and I were fortunate enough to have tickets to go see the play Hamilton down at the Schuster Center last week. Uh, I highly recommend it. Very, very good um, play. It took me out of my comfort zone, actually. I'm not much of a rapper. Um, but Alexander, Alexander Hamilton apparently was. And uh, one of the things that he kept repeating over and over throughout the play was, I'm not going to miss my shot. I'm not going to miss my shot. And he didn't. Ironically, uh, in the end, when he and Aaron Burr were having their duel, he told his son, you aim high. And if the other person has any integrity, they will too. Well, Aaron Burr, of course, didn't. Try. And I'll tell you right now, many people are wasting their shot by looking for physical miracles, all the while missing the true miracle of God's never-ending mercy and God's grace in your lives. I'm not going to waste my one shot at this life worrying about my past or what has been. I can't change that anyway. I'm not going to miss my shot 
by looking inward and wondering why Jesus hasn't given me the same blessing he gave somebody else. I'm not going to waste my shot by loving Jesus, at, my one shot at loving Jesus, by coveting someone else's miracle when Jesus has already given me everything he has. Jesus healed as a sign, not only to bless one person, but to demonstrate to all who he really was. When we read these stories of healings in the Bible, or hear about a miraculous healing today, don't miss your shot to come to know who Jesus really is. He is God, our Father, in the flesh, who came to show us how much he loves us. May you learn the lesson from these healing stories that Jesus can miraculously heal physically, but the most important healing is the bridging of the chasm between humans and Almighty God, caused by our sin and our unbelief. May we begin to see with our eyes of faith all the miraculous things God is doing in our lives every single day. May we respond to those signs and wonders in faith, and in love for our neighbor. Thanks be to Jesus Christ for demonstrating God's love for us and through his faith, bringing us true life, Zoe in abundance. Amen. We respond to God's word by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. So please rise if you're able. I believe in God, the Father of all life, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the conscious pile, the first of the child, the Holy Spirit, 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 Thank 
so let us, which is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are invited, or invited to God's table. All are welcome to participate in the fullness of God's abundant healing and reconciling meal. Come to the feast, for it is ready. At this time, uh, please take the little chalice. If you don't have one, please raise your hand and I have a couple extras we can get to you. Everybody has one? Has one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, at this time, please open the side that has the little piece of bread. And you may partake of that. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then you may turn the, the chalice over and just tear back the top of it a little bit. And you may drink, partake. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> So at this time, I'd like to take a moment to talk about our announcements for the upcoming uh, weeks ahead of us in light of our congregation. Uh, we do have confirmation uh, this Wednesday, so 6.30 on Wednesday will be the meeting here, and thus uh, we have a bunch of sick people again, like happened a couple weeks ago. Also, prayers and squares, uh, if you're one of those ladies that needs to do that, uh, we are meeting this week. Thursday at 10. Next Sunday, uh, there's some kind of a football game. Is your hair pillow still pink, by the way? I can't really tell. Uh, but there's some sort, of a, some sort of a football game next Sunday. However, we at, in, the, in, in the Lutheran Church, we celebrate next Sunday as soup, like in chicken soup, Super Bowl. And so in the back of the church, there will be a large soup container with a soup ladle in there uh, for an extra offering, uh, if you would be so kind, and that extra offering will go to our food pantries that we support, so we'll go to stay local here. Uh, Super Bowl Karen is what it's called, uh, part of a national, really international uh, movement now. Every Almost every church uh, does that, so please uh, come next week uh, and be prepared to be generous with the Super Bowl of giving. Also this week, uh, ladies and gents, I'm, I'm changing the name to ladies and gents luncheon because I like to go and eat. Hmm? It's not this week. It's not this week? Oh. It's next week? The week? 17th. The 17th. I had the wrong week. Okay. Well, I'm glad you corrected me on that. Thank you. Um, let's see. So February 17th is the ladies and gents. So all you gents out there, I'd like to have somebody come and join me with the ladies. Uh, otherwise, I have a great time on They like to talk and so do I. So it's a good time. Coming up a little bit further down the road, Ash Wednesday is March the 2nd. That's not that far away. So we're already starting to run, or at least starting to look at Lent. Um, we will have an Ash Wednesday worship service that will uh, give you the ashes, the tradition on, on Ash Wednesday, along with Holy Communion. And then uh, that starts uh, a process of. So, um, self-examination for about 40 days before Easter. Uh, during that time, I've already uh, procured uh, some reflections that we can do, and I'll be putting those out as videos, and I'll be looking for some of you to once again
again help me out in that um, area to make those videos so that we can pre-record them and then put them out as a midweek sort of reflection um, on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page. Now, let's see, the last thing here. Oh, that's it. That's the last thing. Is there anything else we need to talk about? If there is, please come down to the front so that you can be uh, heard and seen by all of our people that are watching the morning. Well, I was just going to remind you all that we have a very nice children's curriculum that we started, and it's very easy to follow, and I have a sign-up sheet here for that as well as for special music on Sundays. Children can also provide special music. So it can be instruments, it can be a group, it can be an individual, it can be a reading. So I encourage you to consider signing up to participate in special music or to help teach the children. So, thanks. I think my granddaughter, Lexi, signed up. She's gonna play her violin for you next Sunday. Kathy read all the prayer concerns on this morning, but I just want to mention a little bit more about Pastor Ken Oren. He is a pastor at the Brethren Church here at the north end of town. He just was diagnosed with leukemia. He starts treatment the 17th of February and will not be allowed to be in the general public for six months. So the pastors at the church has asked me to fill a Sunday or two a month, and another pastor who retired for a Sunday or two a month for the next six months. So. He's a man here, and I know Pastor Mel and him know each other. So it's just a, um, one of those things that you never anticipate from your pastor. But uh, he's going to have trouble here for a while. So just keep him that, him and also the Brother Church in your prayers. Thank you. Everybody else? <clears throat> Thank you. If there's no more announcements, then our service will conclude with the sending blessing. So please rise and pen. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless you, and you're going out and you're coming in today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending him is love divine, all loves excelling.
worship with us in person. Thank you also for all our Facebook Live viewers. We're glad you joined us as well. Until the next time we gather again as God's people to offer our worship and praise in Christ's love.